I'm F-R-E-E, -E, fuck nigga free. Fuck. That mean I ain't gotta worry about no fuck nigga chick. What's up? My name is Divested Witch, and I want to talk about Tamar Braxton's new man being white and why black males are so highly upset about this, and also why divested women need to watch out for the type of white men they attract. So let's get started. Um, Tamar Braxton is the sister of Tony Braxton. Um, Tamar Braxton has endured a lot of abuse by the hands of black males in the black community. Um, she has been molested uh, since she was a baby all the way up to adulthood by the black male members of her family. Every black male that she's gotten with has either beaten her, used her for money or cheated on her. So she has endured a lot as a black woman being in the black community. And it's funny that black males have nothing to say about this, um, but they have everything to say about her dating a white man. And it's not even about the white man's character. It's just about him having white skin. Black males are so jealous of white men that they don't give a shit about the man's character. They just give a shit about him dating um, Tony Braxton's sister. See, it's funny that black males date outside their race more than any other groups of males on the planet, but they have an issue with you exploring your options. Okay, um, Tamar Braxton is in her 40s, I believe, and um, that is an age where black males say you're undesirable. They say if you're in your 30s and 40s that you hit the wall, um, that you are going to die alone and you're never going to find anyone. And when stories like this come out of Tamar Braxton being with a uh, attractive white man come out, a lot of them are highly upset and jealous over this because it completely destroys their argument. OK, black women, we have options. OK, even women in their 30s, 40s and 50s have more options when it comes to dating and marriage than men in their 20s. OK, so they want to sit there and cry online talking about, well, if this was a black man with a white woman, y'all would be trying to crucify him and, and y'all would criticize him. You know why they get criticized is because you proceed to tear down your own race of women when you get with white women. OK, when you get with white women and you're talking about how nappy headed black women are. How black women's dark skin is ugly and all this shit like that. That's why your ass is getting dragged online. That's why nobody supports black males being with white women. It's because of the way you fucking act. All right. Me being a divested black woman, you don't see on my channel talking about black males facial features and stuff like that. I don't do that. I don't talk about how nappy headed black males are and, and my white man has straight blonde hair and you don't. You don't ever hear me say that shit. All right. That's why people support my relationship with my white man and they don't support you because you sit on your fucking platform talking about how ugly and dark black women are and how nappy headed they are. And then you can't figure out why no race of people are supporting you. All right. So don't come on my channel boohooing and all that shit. You don't get no sympathy. So anyway, black males have had ample opportunity to treat Tamar Braxton correctly, and they didn't. They want to beat her, use her, abuse her to the point where she wanted to take her own life. All right. That is the black man's ultimate goal is to get you so beaten down and so lowly that you want to take your own life. Tamar Braxton is a beautiful woman. This is a recent photo of Tamar Braxton, and she's looking better and better than ever. Okay. She's looking good. She's looking nourished. She's looking refreshed. And black men can't see the sight of this, okay? They can't. They fly into a jealous rage at the very sight of a black woman that knows herself worth and starting to pick and date and choose better groups of men, all right? They can't stand that. And I told you, women, that the more divestment is spoken of, the more you're going to see it go mainstream. The more you're going to see women in high profile positions like celebrities and athletes starting to divest. Okay. Divestment used to be an underground movement. It is not anymore. Okay. You're going to see more and more high profile relationships like this coming out. All right. Because black women have had enough. Black women in the black community um, are getting beaten down, used, abused, and cheated on. And it's like, you know what? I'm sick and tired of this. Let me move to a different group of males who are going to most likely treat me better, okay? That's what's happening right now, all right? So anyway, I want to talk about um, some red flags, though. You need to watch out for this. 
Just because a man has white skin does not mean he is high quality. Okay. In divestment, we teach hypergamy, but we also teach how to vet men properly. In order to vet men properly, you need to use a thing called common sense. Okay. Look for red flags. Look for things that he has done in his past relationship because that's going to be a clear indicator of how he's going to treat you. Okay. So I want you ladies to pay attention to this article that I'm about to read. Divested black women, uh, we need to be careful about rejoicing in um, new couples because we have not seen this couple in action yet. We haven't seen the fruits of their labor yet. And um, there's multiple reports coming out against this man. Um, his exes are calling him a colonizing predator who preys on black women. So um, black women, be aware of this, especially if you're newly divested, that there are two types of white men out there. There are white men who are white male identified, meaning that they identify as white men. They identify with their white culture and they identify with their white society and the rules that are in that white society. And then there are wiggers. Wiggers are white men who are rejected by their society. These are white men who are not traditional. OK, they don't act like a traditional white man. These are what I refer to as wiggers, okay? What is the point in being divested if you're just going to get with a wigger? Someone who is displaying the same bad behaviors as, as a black man. Because a wigger wants to be like a black man. A wigger knows that his white skin makes him better than a black man, quote unquote. But he wants to affiliate himself with black culture, Okay. These are two separate types of white men. Now, women who are divested, we want the white man who identifies as a white man. OK, we don't want our white men acting like wiggers. We don't want our white men trying to fit in with black males. We don't want that. OK, but someone who is a swirler has no problems with getting with the wigger. They have no problems with it and they end up getting burnt and can't figure out why. According to this article by A Showbiz, Tamar Braxton's new boyfriend called out by his alleged ex. He is a colonizing predator. Now, um, that is a strong, strong term to call a white man who dates um, black women. Um, and there's got to be some reasons why she's calling him a colonizing predator. So let's continue to read this article. OK. Tamar Braxton may be seeing red flags now shortly after she sparked dating rumors with a new guy. An alleged ex-girlfriend of Tamar Braxton's new boyfriend, Jeremy Robinson, has called him out for preying on black women. She also goes on to say that he has a fetish for black women so much that he often refers to himself as light-skinned or white chocolate. Now, who else do you know brags about being light-skinned? Typically biracials um, who want to affiliate with black culture and exoticals who want to compete with black women for black males. These people know you fetishize them. They know that their proximity to whiteness is special in your community. That's why you will see them bragging about having light skin, light eyes and good hair. OK, it's because they hang out with um, nakers most of the time. OK, these are the type of white people you don't want in your life. You do not want the type of white people who are affiliating themselves with black culture to the point where they're fetishizing you. OK, because a fetish, you know, a man that fetishizes you, he'll fuck you. He'll have sex with you, but he's never going to wife you up. He's never going to make you a respectable wife. And you ain't never going to have no solid foundation or a solid family structure with the type of man who's a wigger that fetishizes you. OK. So anyway, yeah, he refers to himself as light skinned and white chocolate, which is a major red flag. And also he would attend clubs almost nightly preying on beautiful black women and taking them home. So this man sounds like a womanizer to me. I don't want no man that takes his ass to nightclubs every night. OK, what are you, a kid? OK, you should have got that out of your system when you were in your teens and your 20s. OK. Any man who wants to go to bars and nightclubs every night is childish, in my opinion. You ain't ready to settle down. You ain't ready for no monogamous relationship. And you going to nightclubs every night, taking home a different woman every night. That's a major red flag. So going on to read this article, this woman went on branding the Atlanta lawyer a colonizing predator that fulfills his fetishes of biracial babies to further feed his ego and desires of wanting to be accepted amongst the black community. 
That to me sounds like a fucking wigger, okay? That to me sounds like a fucking wigger. Like, wiggers want to be accepted in the black community because they're not accepted in the white community. They're rejects of the white community, okay? And there's a lot of fetishization going on amongst biracials and things like that in the biracial community. I've seen whole web pages dedicated to biracial babies, okay? Like, it is just so bizarre to me. It's so weird to me. And when I have a kid with my white fiance, when we get married, we plan on having children um, soon after, like... I have to face the fact that people are going to be fetishizing my child because my child is mixed. So I'm just going to be up in guards about that, okay? I don't want my kid to be fetishized. So anyway, um, this woman went on Brandy the Atlanta lawyer, a colonizing predator that fulfills his fetish of biracial babies to further feed his ego and desires of wanting to be accepted in the black community. All right? A biracial baby is like the ultimate, like, God in the black community. Black people put biracials on such a high pedestal, it's fucking ridiculous, okay? Black people hate themselves so badly that they want to attach themselves to anything that is biracial, okay? Even if a a biracial person doesn't even look black. Oh, they got to drop a black, that means they black. You know why black people do that? It's because they hate themselves. They hate themselves so badly that they want to affiliate themselves with biracials and call all biracials black when they're not. Biracials are mixed. They are not black. Okay? And I don't believe in that one drop rule nonsense. I believe in science. Okay? And biology. Fuck out of here. Anyway, she says that he has five children with four different women. What? What? She says that he has five children with four different women. Uh-uh. Put, press the brakes. Uh-uh. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's enough that he already goes to nightclubs and bars regularly. That, that right there is enough for me not to want to date a man. But this man's got five, five children but with four different women and two of them being pregnant at the same time last year. So this man is just sinking his dick uh, raw in multiple women. Uh Uh-uh. This is why I don't like wiggers. Because wiggers will emulate the same terrible behaviors as black males. So now knowing what you know, does this man look like a prize to you? Does this white man look like a prize to you, ladies? All right? Pay attention on how your man moves. Because if I knew that my man had a history like this guy, I wouldn't have even been with my man. All right? I am not that desperate for a white man that I'm going to ignore stats and statistics regarding the troublesome behavior that black males have. So therefore, if you're a wigger and you're emulating those behaviors, that means that you're going to do the same to me as a black male. And I don't want that. That's why I'm not attracted to wiggers, okay? White nakers are wiggers. Just in case somebody's confused, I can't use the the hard R-E-R word, but y'all know who I'm talking about. I can't get with men like that because you trying to emulate all the bad behaviors of a naker, okay? And I don't have time for that, all right? I want a husband. I don't want a baby daddy. I don't want to be your next baby daddy. Got a bunch of mixed kids. Good for you. But your your baby mamas are still struggling. Okay? They ain't got no fathers in their lives. Okay? You manipulated and abused them and used them. So you got a trail of damaged black woman behind you. You are no different than a naker. You are no fucking different than a naker and I don't want anything to do with you. Okay, point blank period. Black women, you need to learn how to vet these men properly, especially if there's white, because there's a lot of white males who are wiggers who have infiltrated the divestment movement because they know you are looking for white men. They know that. 
and they will pander to you in order to get access to you. Especially if you're a black woman that got something about yourself. You a black woman with a college degree, a house, a car, make your own money, you're attractive. Oh yeah, a wigger will definitely pander to you. Okay? He knows all the right words to say to get to get in your pants and get into your life. That's what makes us different than swirlers. A swirler doesn't vet her men. Divestors do. We vet our men. I don't want a wigger. I want a traditional white man. That's what I want. A conservative white man. Okay? If you're not white and Republican, I'm not interested. Sorry. If you're not white and traditional, I'm not interested in you. So continuing on with this um, article, um, it states that a video has also surfaced showing Jeremy and his alleged former fiance, who is a black woman. He reportedly was just engaged to last year. So could you imagine you're planning your wedding um, with a man of your dreams and then he dumps you and then a year later he's on with someone else? It's like, clearly you didn't even love me because I personally couldn't move on that fast if I just broke up with someone. But he has, and um, apparently there's a video showing the two of them together. Meanwhile, another of Jeremy's alleged girlfriends have threatened to expose him as well. The woman posted on her Instagram story, my sugar baby done proposed and I'm going to make him pay for the embarrassment. The fuck? So, I mean, this man just has endless women in his life, you know, willing to spread their legs open for him and so forth. And... Black women, don't fall for the trap, please. Okay, this man was just engaged last year. And also, if you read the bottom of this article, it says that um, Gossip of the City also shared a picture of Jeremy getting on his bended knee while presenting a woman with a ring. While the woman's face was cropped out, it's alleged that he's going to marry Tamar. So Tamar is in his targets, okay? And can you guess why? This man is a lawyer, all right? This man knows if he marries Tamar, that not only does he has access to her money, he has access to all of her Hollywood connections as well. So you was engaged last year. You broke it off. You're wishy-washy. You don't know what you want. And then you run into this celebrity. And now you want to get married to her right away and you are just dating. That to me screams that this man is a predator, that this man is looking for a bag that he's looking for her Hollywood connections, okay? This man has every reason to want to get with Tamar. It's because she is a celebrity. She is more powerful than any black woman that he's ever been with, okay? She has the Hollywood connections. She pretty much comes from black Hollywood royalty, okay? So, of course, this man who's a lawyer... And already has a fetish for black women is going to go for Tamar. Okay? And she fell for that okie doke. All right? She fell for the okie doke. So black women, be aware of this. All right? Uh, do I think that this relationship is going to last? No. I'm L-R-E-E, fuck nigga free. That mean I ain't got to worry about no fuck nigga cheap.